Hi, this is Marcelo Martins with the Mongoose team. In this video, we'll walk through how to use the Postman application to test Mongoose API calls. We'll also use those same API calls in an Excel sheet to run a report on the Mongoose server and then view that report in the browser. This was recently used by a solution consultant to demonstrate the power of Mongoose in a proof of concept. The first thing we're going to want to do is download the Postman application. Once you download the Postman application to your desktop, go ahead and open it up. Next, we're going to need to import the Swagger documentation. To find this, go ahead and head over to your Mongoose environment. Locate the C drive, navigate to the INET pub folder, the www root folder, and then the IDEO request service folder. Inside here you'll find a file called mgrestservice swagger.json. Go ahead and save this to your desktop. Once the file is saved on your desktop, we're going to need to edit this file, so open it up. You'll find a line that says base path IDEO request service mgrestservice.svc. This is actually a URL, but it's incomplete. We need the unique identifier in the first half of it, which is your mongoose URL. To find this, go back to your environment, open up mongoose in the browser, and copy the first half of the URL right before WS Web Client. Paste this, and then save the document. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and edit our host file so our PC can resolve the URL to our mongoose environment. To do this, if you're on a Mac, go ahead and open up the terminal application, and you're going to want to type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash host. It's going to prompt you for your password, so enter it in now. Here you can see my edited host file. On the left, I have the IP address for my local Mongoose machine, and on the right, I have that same URL that we typed into the Swagger documentation. If you're on a PC, I recommend downloading a program called Host File Editor. In Host File Editor, you'll do the exact same thing. Enter in your IP address, and then the local URL for your Mongoose machine. Now you're ready to import your Swagger file into the Postman application. Go ahead and close your terminal window if it's still open, and open up Postman. You'll see a button called Import on the top left. From here, you can choose your Swagger file, which should be on your desktop. Go ahead and open it. You can see I've already imported this file, so I won't do it again. If it was successful, you can show the slider bar, and you should see a new collection called Mongoose REST Service. Here, you'll see all of the different API calls segregated by the type, such as JSON and XML. Now we're ready to start testing our APIs. In this example, there are three specific API calls that we're interested in. The first is security token, the next is fire AES event, and last, load collection advanced. For security token, you're going to want to go ahead and edit this URL. The first time you open it up, it'll probably say something like colon config. Here you're going to go on and go ahead and enter in your configuration name, like I've done here. Next, if you go to the headers tab, you'll see that we have three different keys. Accept, which has a value of the type that we want to accept, user ID, and password. You'll also see that their user ID on the right side is wrapped by two curly braces. This means that it's an environment variable in Postman. Environment variables are helpful in that you can set up different values for different environments. If you go ahead and edit these variables, you can fill them in like I've already done here. So my user ID is SA and my password is a secret. With all this information filled out, we should be able to start our first call. So let's hit send. If everything was successful, you'll see a message that says success and then a long token. Now that we have a working security token, we can move on to the rest of the API calls. Remember, in this example, we want to generate a report on the Mongoose server and then view that report in the browser. If we go to our next API call, fire AES event. You'll see that in the URL, there are a lot more of these environment variables. The first is event name. Now I've went ahead and entered the name of the custom event that I've built on my Mongoose server to run this report. We also have an environment variable called parms, which are the parameters that you want to pass to this event. The notation is simple. Simply type out the name of the variable you want to pass, and then in brackets, go ahead and enter the value that you want to pass. There are also two more variables, return parameters, which is a boolean, and debug, which is also a boolean. If we go to the headers tab, we'll see that there's an accept and a content type, which should be application XML. There are also two more keys that you'll see are grayed out on my screen. That's because we won't need them. 
Lastly, there's an authorization key. This authorization variable is going to be the token that you got in the security token in the previous call. If we go ahead and hit send, we should be good to go. You'll see a message of 600, and that means you've run successfully. You'll also see the parameters that I passed in and the values that I passed for them. It's important to note here that even though I'm calling a custom event, you can actually call any AES event as long as you know the event name and the parameters required. Now that we've successfully run the report on the server, we're going to need to get the URL to that report so we can view it in the browser. To do this, we're going to want to use the Load Collection Advanced API call. If you look at the URL, you'll see that there are a lot of settings. The first two is colon IDO and colon props. This is just the name of the IDO you want to load and the properties you want to return. There are also quite a few environment variables. These are also just settings to help you limit your results, such as filter and order by. Remember, not all of these environment variables are mandatory, so if you don't need them, just leave them blank. Now I've gone ahead and on another tab, I filled out the entire URL for us. Lastly, we're going to want to move to the headers tab and see that we have an accept of type application XML and an authorization with an environment key that is just the security token that we got from the previous API call. If we hit send, we should load the collection of the last report ran. And it was successful. And here, on the third paragraph, is the name of the report that we want to view in the browser. So it looks like we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Excel sheet. As you can see, I've created a couple of input fields for our parameters and a button to generate the report. Make sure the Developer tab is available, and if it's not, please activate it in the settings. Once it is, go ahead and enter design mode. From here, we can double click on the Generate Report button and edit the code. Before we begin, you're going to want to make sure that under Tools and References, that the Microsoft XML v6 reference is checked. This will allow us to parse the XML returned from the API call. Also, if you're on Windows Server, you're going to want to check the Microsoft XML v3. Click OK and you're good to go. To start, we first set three variables at the top. A request variable, an API call, and a token. Now I'm setting my token from a settings sheet, but you could probably just hard code it right here. Now that's the security token that we got from the API earlier. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and create our API call. To do this, we want to copy the fire AES event URL into our worksheet, replacing these variables with values from the sheet itself. Once you've formulated the entire API call, you can set the request using the create object win HTTP, open the request, giving it a post parameter and the API call that we just wrote out, and then you'll have to set the request headers. These headers are the exact same as the header tab on Postman. Once you copy those in, you can send the request. Now that we've sent the request, the report should be generated on the server. However, I have a simple wait statement here so we can give it a little time to save the report before loading the collection. Also, if you want to view the response from the request, you can use the request.response text and set it to one of the cells on your sheet. I have it commented out, but it is helpful when debugging. Now, we're going to want to go ahead and create our second request object. Here, go ahead and create another variable, then create the object the same way we did before. Now set it to open with a git and then the API URL. Remember, this is the load collection API, and you just want to copy the same URL that you created earlier, replacing any variables with hard-coded values. Also, you're going to want to set the request headers, which are also the same as the headers tab on Postman, and then send the request. Finally, we're going to want to create an object to hold our XML response. To do that, Create a variable of type msxml2.dom document, then set the variable to a new version of that object. Here I have a simple if statement that says if the response from the request isn't properly loaded into an XML format, raise an error. Next, we create a variable called point, which is going to be an ixmldom node, which is simply a node on the XML document. Now if we go back and look at the response from the load collection, we know that we want the third paragraph in the XML tree. So to do that, we simply navigate down the tree 
till we get the paragraph that we want. Finally, we create a URL string. We add in the URL to view reports on the server. And then we take that URL from the point and we replace any spaces with %20s so we can view it in the browser. Lastly, we'll create a browser object, set that browser object to the Internet Explorer application, make sure the browser is visible, and then navigate to the URL of our report. Finally, let's see everything in action. If we go back to the Excel sheet and we exit design mode, you'll see that I have customer7 entered in the two starting and ending variables. If we click Generate Report, this will send the API call to the server to generate the report. Our local code will wait 15 seconds to give the report enough time to save, and then we should get an API response back with the URL to view the report in the browser. And there you have it, an order status report for Customer 7 generated from an Excel sheet. For tutorial videos and documentation, visit the Mongoose portal. This is Marcella from the Mongoose team, and thanks for watching.